Hey everyone, welcome back to another Unity tutorial video. Today, I'll be showing you how to create an interactive grass shader using Shader Graph within the URP pipeline. Before we start, make sure you have the necessary environment set up. So, let's get started. First, let's create a basic grass model in Blender. To create a simple grass model, we can start by making a plane and adding a grass texture to it. This will give us a flat surface with the appearance of grass. Next, we'll duplicate this plane to ensure that our model can be seen from different angles. I used a triangular arrangement, but you can also use a cross arrangement if you prefer. Once the model is complete, export it and let's head over to Unity to start creating the grass shader. I have already set up a scene, but there's no grass in it yet. So let's drag the grass model we just created into our scene, and then create a grass shader. Select the URP, and then choose the Lit Shader Graph. Give it a name you prefer and double-click to open it. Now, we can start editing our shader. First, we need to check the Alpha Clipping option because our grass texture requires transparency. Next, we create a 2D texture and connect it to the Sample Texture node. We can control the color of the texture by multiplying it with a color. Let's create a color variable and give it a name. Connect it to the multiply node, and set the default color to white. I recommend using white as the default color because black can make the texture too dark and difficult to see. After saving, let's create a material. Right click on our shader graph file and create a material. Make sure to select the shader we just created. Let's choose a grass texture to see how it looks. Hmm, it looks a bit strange. It seems like we need to make some adjustments. Set the render face to both so that our shader can render both sides of the plane model. Also, I forgot to connect the alpha value of the texture to our shader earlier. After making this connection, our shader should look more normal. Next, let's create a float variable to control the smoothness. We can change the mode to slider in the node settings so we can control the value range. After saving, let's see how the result looks. The model's reflections look a bit strange, probably due to the issue with the model's normals. Let's go back to the shader graph to fix this problem. Create a vector 3 node and change its Y value to 1 so that we have a normal facing upwards. Let's see if this solves the problem. The model looks a bit too shiny. Let's reduce the smoothness value to find the appropriate reflection coefficient. Great, we have completed the basic grass shader. Next, let's simulate the effect of wind blowing through the grass. We can use a sine function waveform to simulate the movement of the wind, just like in this picture. By inputting time into the sine function, we can obtain an up and down oscillating waveform. Let's go back to shader graph to create this effect. Right click and type, sign, to find the sign node. Then add a time node. We can connect the time input directly to the sign node. Or use a float to control the speed of the animation by multiplying it with time before connecting it here. With the sine wave, we can offset the vertices to simulate the effect of wind blowing the grass. Add a position node. Combine it with the sine wave. And don't forget to transform the vertex space before outputting. Since the input requires object space, we need to perform the transformation first. It works. However, currently, we can only control the speed of the wind. Let's add another variable to control the strength of the wind. By multiplying it with the sine wave, we can control the amplitude of the wave, which will allow us to adjust the amount of vertex displacement. Okay, but right now the vertices of the entire grass model are being displaced. 
I'd like to keep the base stationary, as it's more realistic. We can achieve this by multiplying the displacement amount by the texture's V coordinate, which represents the texture's Y value ranging from 0 for the bottommost pixel to 1 for the topmost pixel. This way, we can achieve our goal. Connect the V coordinate to the color of the shader, and we can see that it creates a gradient from black to white. The black represents 0, white represents 1, and the shades of gray are in between. Let's multiply the offset amount by the V coordinate, which should keep the bottom of the model from moving with the offset. Great, now the bottom of the model is not affected by the wind anymore. Let's move on to another issue we need to solve. If there is only one grass in the scene, the animation of the wind looks pretty normal. However, if we add more grass into the scene, you will notice that the swinging animation of each grass is the same. This looks very unnatural, so we need to fix this issue. First, we need to find the differences between these grasses. As you can see, the world position of each grass are different. We can improve the swinging issue by utilizing this point. We can add the world position to the time variable so that each vertex has a different time value. Let's see if this approach works. Done. Now it looks better. Now delete the extra grass and keep only the original one. Let's add LOD group component to our grass. So it won't be rendered when it's too far away from the camera. This can help reduce the processing load of Unity when dealing with rendering. We need to adjust an appropriate distance. When the camera is too far away from the grass, it disappears. We can control the distance at which it disappears from the control panel. And then drag the entire model to the file area below to turn it into a prefab, making it more convenient to use. Then, let's create a new tree in the terrain and select the grass model we just made. After that, you can paint grasses on the terrain. Now press play to see if the shader is working properly. It seems to be working well. Alright, that's the end of this video. We have completed a basic grass shader. In the next video, I will show you how to add interactive effects between the grass shader and the player, as well as some other interesting settings. Stay tuned. Finally, if you have any questions about this video, please leave a comment below. I'll reply as soon as possible. See you in the next video.